Thank you guys, I really appreciate this. You guys, really appreciate this video. It's gonna show a reinforced beam, if you will, loaded in the center, mid-span. Here's your loading in the mid-span here, and you'll see the frequency of the uh, cycles. What you're going to observe is a crack up here, here. I guess I'm already that far into the video. But here's your point of uh, your low points, your shear points, and the uh, stresses are in the center. I'm sorry, stresses are not just in the center, but the load points in the center. And here we are. This considers our piers, north end, south end. But take note of, so it's literally on a roller there. But look, take note of the cracking. And we have this cracking similar to this in the um, bridge structure. For fairness, I do not know the layout of the uh, reinforcement in here. The deflection is very minimum, about a half an inch in this entire span with those cycles now. It's going to tap out in about another minute, less than a minute. We're going to look at the right side. I actually have the video sped up a little bit. And I already did some editing to it. And there's our secondary crack down on the uh, south end, which I'm calling north end, south end. Take note of the cracking at the bottom. Excuse me. Let's pretend like this is the uh, north end, and that's uh, longitudinal post tension cables in there, correction, and that's the post tension bars in there. So you want to close that crack up um, by using the canopy to uh, as your one anchor point in the bottom of the uh, of the uh, in the deck as a second anchor point, and trying to make this bridge more stable by well securing it in that format. Again, I would say that would put a that would put that would put loads low points in two two locations here specifically the uh, where the bottom of the deck meets the number twelve, and also where the bottom of number where the where the post tension longitudinal um, where the uh, post tension bar meets the bottom of the deck and number twelve intersection, not eleven twelve intersection. That's up here. I'm talking about where it's in the sub deck, if you will, not in the. Don't not to be confused with the eleven twelve combination hit up top. And there's your fine line, cracking. Let's go back to. Right there. Let me pause it. So here's your your. We do know we have longitudinal cracking, and number eleven. Um, we do know that. We also know that in my previous video I showed how cracking, I think theorized, can continue down through the deck, and that would just cause you know separation also. That's obviously a different load here. We've got a dead load of the structure though, and you can. You know, you can pick 950 tons if you want. You know, I don't care how much you pick of that and how much you want to knock off of that. You can knock off 20 tons. You still got 930 tons to deal with. Um, the points that are connected to the uh, 
to the peers is very small. It's very small. In fact, if uh, they didn't grout yet, we could even get that down to a smaller um, uh, cross section or contact load points because they were sitting up on what looks appear to be like a nylon shims, possibly steel plates. But nevertheless, it's not, it's not fully contacted on the bottom. It wasn't fully grouted, as I understand. Let's visualize. I know this is blurry, but this is what I'm sharing with you guys at this point. Visualize your longitudinal post-tension cables through here. Times two only. C2, C3 on each side. That's the strong back, if you will, that is created here. Um, if the loads were doing this, as you see the cracks there, well, they would continue straight up, wouldn't they? They would be inside the, where we can't visualize it anymore. Where we, I'm sorry, where I visualize it, where you can't literally visualize it, put your eyes on it. But the cracks are still, I believe, gone through the canopy at that point. Just to give you guys an idea again that, so when you're post-tensioning, I think that little bit of one foot, it's actually less than one foot when you do all the deductions of uh, concrete in the canopy, that it, it just failed. It just cracked. And the, uh, well, or in the other one was on the north side of the node. So if this is the node. You got to visualize the node above this crack, if you will. Now we're calling, I'm calling this the number 11. So visualize the node and you can visualize this as being the end of number 12 here. And you can put 10 in wherever you like it, right about there. With that said, the, uh, this cracking down number 11 makes it null that it that it's no longer able to transfer the loads and then pretty much it went back down 10 it was took over the loads along with this lat from from 10 over to number 12 that that now that longitudinal post tension cable C2 and C3 times 4 two on each side of the center line of the of the well the blister bars and remember that we have C1, which is closer to the blister bars that are hollow. Um, they're, they're not filled with concrete. None of the, none of the, as I saw, none of the longitudinal post-tension cables were filled with grout. Not in the canopy, nor down there when we went through it. Now, I reserve the right to, for someone else to show it to me, and I'll do the correction on that. Still, number C1 was not filled. And that's the closest point and the weakest point of this system, um, if you look at it in that capacity. So that number, if we have cracking, it's no longer quite load-bearing. We know we have no buckling here, although initially we all thought we saw buckling. Um, I don't think that's so. You've got breaks in the number 11, as, I, as uh, we talk about, right at the bottom and at the top of number 11. So you, now we have two choices again. Remember, we had two breaks on, on the opposite side of the blister. There was the south side and also the cl side closer to the north end, the north side. South side is eliminated because when we see the bridge collapse and while it's still in the air, the uh, south of the blister is intact. This V-shape is in perfect shape. It's, in, it's, in, it's not in a non-deformed shape. So then we have a break here in, in the north side of the canopy of the blister. And we have a break on the north side of the lower number 10. Again, and then we have a break here. In here, we have to resolve on number 11 as we see it on the ground. Hmm. We know at one point this, this started um, pushing out. That If you look at the def deformation of the, in the video of number 12, it started, deforming, it started deforming out. So somewhere, when this broke, it pushed over a little bit, as I showed in previous videos. But I also thought I saw number 11 drop down. Now, I'm real iffy on that because it's behind the crane. So let's go ahead and say it broke at the bottom of, of, uh, of the 11 down here. Um, but it didn't, could it break initially? So we have this breaking initially. How, how do you get that? You have a crack in it. You need this, this crack here. This should have to be under full load. If it broke initially, you would have what? The loads still wanting to drive down here and then shifting to the shifting to the north uh, you know I, it's I, I uh, it's already broken all right it's already broken here hmm so well, let's 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 make 11 fail one way or another um, 
that have failed at the top with, with cracks that are undisclosed, or we have disclosed cracks down here where it failed and broke. Huh. I, I don't get it. Where it broke and what? Drove number 12? Can't drive number 12. We see number 12 intact on the ground. But let's, gosh, I just can't get this number 11 broken down here properly to initiate everything going. We have it already broken. All I keep coming back to is the uh, post-tensioning was, was taking place at the time. We don't have the bottom of uh, number, the last reinforcement, they were the last post-tension bar. We don't have that driving upwards because we see it embedded and the, we see it literally embedded still in the NTSB video. It's still in place. So it didn't drive up. Now we have the top, the, the one they did before that. It's still stuck in number 12 at the point that this thing rotated over. It got stuck at the top still um, as this rotated around. It was still holding in, enough so where it held it up to the last moment while the uh, deck fell down. And as the deck fell down, it ripped itself from the bottom of the post-tension bar. Correction. It ripped itself. Now I'm going to follow with me this. So it ripped itself. Starting over. I'm going to show you that, that the top of this was intact, is what I'm driving at. So we, we, we work kind of backwards here. We know in the, on the ground we have the loop of the... From starting from here, we have number 11 jacked up in the air like this, right? And then the bottom of number 11 is pinned, the uh, post-tension bar, and it's looped around like that, coming down into the deck. All right, right there. It's permanent. Well, we know it ripped out the bottom of number 11. So how did it do that? Number 11, because the bottom of number 11, because of number 12, the... Uh, the uh, Top, this number three, I call it, it's A and B, but I'm calling it number three. It was the third one post tension because it was so secure in the bottom of number 12, so embedded that when it fell, started falling, number 12 didn't fall, as we know, it's still stuck on the top of the pier. As it started falling, as the deck started falling, number and this the bottom of the deck broke free, it literally fell down with. Um, ripping itself as as this top part was in place down with the deck as it fell over and then adopt then the bottom deck started falling it literally ripped itself out of the bottom of number 11 to uh, till it hit the ground so I'm saying that both number number the number four and number three or a and B post tension bars were so secure in there that they did not have movement down there <sighs> boy I know Right, because I'm showing you there was that stable that it ripped itself out of there with all the forces. So we don't have a breakdown here initially. And my thinking is, um, again, because we don't get movement going. If we just break it down there, we don't have the, the detail of number 11 being crushed up to that point. And besides that, you can't crush number 11 without moving the canopy. So number 11 can't become smaller, if you will. It can't contract, but can't become smaller unless it breaks the canopy. Number 11's in line to break the canopy in the south side of the node. This would be a problem. But now I'm going to resolve the problem. Because we have the hollow number C1 and C, C1 times 2 on each side of the center line, I believe when they were post-tensioning, uh, the forces were coming down here, but there were also significant forces coming down across the, by default because this C2 and C3 have post-tension um, forces in them. And when you crank down on this one to close up joints or whatever they were doing here, closing up, uh, closing up joints, closing up cracks, that they literally put a force on, on, the, uh, on this longitudinal post-tension cables times four of them. They put a force on them that changed the load path, that put the extra stresses, since this was, you know, trying to pull it, trying to flatten out something here. It changed the forces from this point to number 12. And when it did that, it, it resolved itself by breaking on the north side 
of the node. And let's let's use the node as an action. Because remember I said that right here we can't we, we we're focusing on that the plates, the two eight by twelve plates created the force and created a crack here. Let's let's say it didn't let's say that held up as it was driving. Then let's use the north side of the node as another contact point to the top of the deck. That's also a, a contact point, if you will, a driving force that could cause that cracking right there between C1, the, both C1s. At that point, C1s crack. You've got the uh, top canopy failing. You've got the forces now coming down 10 because now this is no longer being able to carry it over. 10 tries to, it still tries to make it over. So 10, 10 we have it at a perfect place, perfect position or perfect uh, non-distorted position. 10 in the bottom deck try to carry the loads over to the pier, the, the uh, pylon. It's very early in the morning for me guys. To the pylon, as in I haven't gone to bed yet. And the forces then resolve themselves by breaking in front of the north side of number 10. And I think that's the mechanism of a failure. I'm I'm liking this a lot. I have to revisit this and some videos for you guys to, to show you this again. But I wanted to show you this video and give you a heads up on where I'm going with the next videos to show you how that action's happening there. This is my scene stealer, if you will. And now I'll give you the, uh, the scene as we come forward in the next two or three vi videos with more data supporting this.